the Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama, a two-class challenge series for emerging talent and enthusiast racers. Platinum, the fastest class with the newest Porsche 911 Carrera GT3 Cup race cars. Gold, for 911s from 2009 model year and older. And within those two classes, a Masters Championship battle ensues. That's for drivers aged 45 and older. Tyres are from Yokohama. Race cars are from Porsche. Setup is critical, but talent and racecraft are how you win. Every second counts. No mistake goes unpunished. Drivers aren't pros, but this is an amateur hour. All of Porsche's factory races started in a series just like this. It's the largest single make series on the planet. This is the Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge presented by Yokohama. And the field coming up, you see them bypassing the chicane as we are looking for the green flag to get this 11th round of the IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama underway. We are green, Sloan Yuri. Good start moving in, but a nice move there. Madison Snow trying to get that inside, take it away from a great start. No, is he going to be able to do it? He's down to the inside. Jeremy side by side at the exit of two. That was a, a very tight uh, start there, but a great getaway by Sloan Uri there. The pressure for him, no problem. The 21-year-old, first ever pole position in this championship. He's uh, really come on strong in the last few races, driving Ooh. for effort racing, and that was a tremendous getaway. Look at that. He's already got about eight car lengths over the second place car of Madison Snow. Well, there was some good battling for that second spot, and Madison had to go a little bit defensive, a little bit of a take there, but getting away with it. One of the NGT cars a little bit further back in the field. That might have been Dewerson as they're coming up right there. Good run, Dewerson in that number 27. But Yuri making good his escape. And one of the true speed cars, I think that may have been Brett Sandberg yeah. who got the start of the race, leaping up from the eighth spot into third, Jeremy. Yeah, and challenging for second, wasn't he, on that first yeah. lap? Just an amazing getaway by Brett Sandberg, another youngster who's really taken to the cars well this season. He's still looking for his first win, as is Sloan Hurry, in fact. But uh, what a great start that was by him. And Sandberg there in third place. And uh, Madison Snow there, he's kind of on his all on his own, isn't he? He's got about 10 car lengths before and after him, but he's now going to set his sights on Sloan Uri and try to whittle away that advantage that Uri has got on this first lap. Uri completing that lap onto the front straight. Now they have to run the chicane, and it is a car breaker. But these cars, look at that, getting those inside right side tires up and over the curb, gets them up in the air and lots of different approaches to that chicane. We got our first bit of contact. Bodywork flying, didn't quite see the car. We'll notice it in a minute when we see that head-on shot. But those tires were going to take some abuse. I think that was Eduardo Cisneros in one of the NGT Motorsports cars, car number 29. I fancy it's what it was that uh, clipped that tire pretty hard on the exit of that chicane. We're going to see now whether there's any damage to the front of that car. We've seen it time and time again this season. The uh, Porsches are susceptible to front end damage. The radiators are down in those corners on the front of the car and uh, any sort of solid impact there can damage those radiators and it's not going to be long after that before your race comes to an end. That is your fourth place car right there, the 41 of Mike Mills. He is the second of those blue entries. Teammate to your leader, Sloan Uri, in those beautiful blue effort racing machines. And right behind him sits the 44 of Dave Ostella, also having a superb start in his true speed entry. Qualified that seventh up into fifth as we have completed a lap and a half of this very tricky complex here. It's uh, sort of an S's in a chicane-like form leading you on to this pit straight. That was a great first lap from yeah. Sloan Uri, really was. He pulled out uh, almost a second and a half over Madison Snow, who got around and, and held Benitez. And Benitez really must have made a bad start. He's back in, well, he's not outside the top half a dozen here. So uh, he really made a, a poor getaway there for NGT Motorsports. It had held Benitez and Madison Snow that battling for this championship. Just nine points between them coming into this weekend. Six races to go in the championship. Number 14, yeah, problem for him down oh. into the pits early. And this is sprint type racing, folks. You're in the pits, you're out of it. And a tough day, qualified fourth. Yeah, the youngster, this is his best ever qualifying. Actually, uh, yeah, equaled his best ever qualifying. He's fourth on the grid also at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca earlier in the season. Uh, it's a small team, a family run team. Colin done a really fine job to qualify there in fourth position. So what a disappointment to that, to that little team to be in the pits yeah. so early on. 
Boy, and I'll tell you, after Uri and Snow, that battle for third on back is a train. Yeah. These two guys have made good their escape, and I think it may have been Duerson, actually, that caught that tire barrier, perhaps, uh, looking like a little bit of damage to that car just now going into, ooh, getting a little uh, bit of a tap from Benitez. And Benitez has to be frustrated because Madison Snow was very concerned about just getting through this race. After the crash he had in the practice session, car wasn't where he wanted, or in the qualifying session, said, well, I don't know what kind of car I'm going to get. I'm not sure it's going to be what I need to really race on hell here. I need to just hang tight. We've got a challenge. David Estella. Nice Estella move there. Down the inside, David Estella, the young Canadian, stepping into the car. That's the car that's been driven by Phil Fogg Jr. in the last few races. Now carrying the Entrust sponsorship. That was new for the last round at Road America on this particular car. Uh, Phil Fogg not able to make it here this weekend. So David Estella, the young Canadian, raced here before. One of the few drivers yeah. to, on this field to have raced here before, racing Indy lights uh, open wheel cars before now but he's making use of that uh, experience here to now get up into the top half to, into the top five yeah he runs uh, very frequently in the canadian porsche gt3 cup challenge so very uh, familiar with the machinery of course and giving it a very competitive run once he got around mills now he has actually opened that up to the tune of about five yeah. car lengths in a big hurry he certainly has he's pulling away from mills now and setting his tights sights on brent sandberg so that's the two true speed auto sport cars running in third and fourth, it's Sloan Ori for Erfurt Racing out in front. Then Madison Snow in a right motorsport snow racing entry in second place. Then the two true speed cars. Here they are coming down into turn one and down to the inside Ooh. under braking. That is Craig Jewison <laughs> also making a move on Michael Mills. Boy, putting those Yokohamas to the test back into that car, rotating around as he had to pinch down to the apex. Beautiful car control slid underneath, made it work. That uh, he's been showing some tremendous driving form. Ooh, getting a little tap there from Mills. Uh, he didn't like it, did he? Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> Mills like apparently did, thought he was a little slow mid, <laughs> mid corner there and said, let's pick that up a little bit. Tricky corner this one, turn four off of that wide lane into a very narrow stretch here leading toward the pit lane. Yeah, there's not much of a sight line through that corner either, so it really is, you've got you to nail your, your turning point to that corner, just get it right. Just make sure you don't hit the wall on the inside before tracking out to that concrete wall on the outside. So absolutely no room for error there whatsoever. Lots of places on this track. This is what you would call an old school track. Well, for a minute there, I thought we were going to see another attempt from Benitez trying to get by Mills. I think Benitez thinks he's a little quicker, and he certainly wants it here. Looks to the inside, now down into this. Made it work. Beautiful pass, and Benitez is through. Now trying to charge back up and salvage something in terms of points. Yeah, Michael Mills here is certainly slipping back. and uh, qualified in the fifth position. Uh, made him a, a place or two at the start, but now he's slipping back down through the field. The next guy in his sights will be uh, Casey Coolman, who is second of the Masters contenders. That's the driver's over 45 years of age, slightly more experienced out there. And so Craig Giusti is the best place of those guys at the front, and he is a, a problem here for uh, Rafael Benitez, or so that's his, his Angel Rafael Benitez, which is the other Angel Benitez, his father, this is Benitez Senior, who's got a problem down there with his car. Yeah, it hasn't run the full season this year, but uh, some sort of an issue with this one, making it a bit difficult for him as well. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, in a way, now he could get out and watch his son go to work. And uh, I'll tell you, that is something special to see, some tremendous racing. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, those two true speed cars have really started to find their own here as they sit now uh, in a very competitive situation. Good racing a little bit farther back in the pack. 37, that is another of our uh, Masters competitors, but in the gold category, Dave Williams for TPC Racing. Yeah, right behind this is uh, the uh, second second and third place cars there in the gold category uh Jan frank Chesco and david williams in the middle of these two caliber 24 that's mark yano uh, he's a, a veteran uh, drives for the uh, ngt and circuit racing is, is his sponsor well, he's a, a a military veteran yeah. and he has a very cool program that he's been running all the way through season he's, he uses his racing this is his first season of professional racing and he uses his racing to to promote some fantastic causes greg well and he's got one here this weekend you can see on the side of the of the car the the scheme he has is we are full course caution we have just had a caution come out, and it is for Angel Benitez Sr., uh, who was just parked down there. And that you can see all those tires. That means that is an impact zone and a runoff area. And uh, so that's an area that you've got to get him moved if another car has a problem. That's where they might just end up. So uh, that is a problem. So we are under a full course caution here on the streets of Baltimore. Let's see if we can uh, give you a look at what may have unfolded there. Watch for it down. Here we go. Trying the outside move, just a little bit too much steam, Jeremy. 
Yes, quite a bit too much steam now. I don't know we had some sort of an issue with the car because uh, he certainly left his braking late, but he didn't seem to, he didn't lock him up. I don't know. Hard to say what happened there because he didn't hit anything. That's 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 the good news. So no extensive damage on the car. He went down into the escape road and uh, you kind of bailed out there. But the good news is there's no damage there and it won't take him long to get this car out of the way. But certainly a shame for uh, Andres Senior here uh, because uh, he's had a couple of good runs lately. Absolutely, it does. This time, single file restart, so they have to run through the chicane. Uri brings him on to the front straight, but Snow very close. Sandberg wanted to be racing. Remember, Sandberg came from eighth to third, but that was in the double file original start. Everybody clears the chicane, and the race is on. Sandberg looking to the inside, forcing Madison down to defend. Madison going to try and get down the inside and take that lead away from Uri. Uri stays put. Beautiful piece of driving by Uri around the outside. Jeremy, and he hangs on to the lead. Smart driving by yep. both of those two. They each gave gave each other racing room there, uh, and uh, there was no contact, no harm, no foul. Uh -oh. oh, but Ari has just overstepped. He's going to turn three, left his braking just a little bit too late, and around comes the back end of the car. He spins. We have a new race leader. And it is Madison Snow, who is pretty comfortable in that position. Meanwhile, Dewerson working his way, and Benitez making the pass, trying to move up as well. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, that was huge. Uri opening that door, Madison Snow, that points lead with Benitez back a little bit. That is crucial for Madison Snow. Boy, for a guy who had a pretty good shunt, and uh, they had to really work and thrash to get that car rebuilt, has put together a great opening few laps. Back end stepping out right toward the wall, onto the pit straight, and he leads. But Sandberg is looking awfully racy here. Yeah, what a shame for Uri uh, there, because he'd done a super job on the first corner. He came under intense pressure from Madison Snow, and then going into the hairpin at turn three, just left his braking just a tad too late. Couldn't quite hold on the back end of the car, but now Madison Snow, he's exactly where he needs to be. He's already this season won four of the ten races. As we talked about a few minutes ago, he's got a nine-point advantage coming in to the championship. But now his uh, his main rival, who was back in sixth place, is now up into fourth. And Benita certainly is going to try and make, make his way forward and maybe try and uh, put some pressure on Madison Snow. But Snow now, he's just got to... Uh, he knows he's got a fast car, he knows he's got experience, he hasn't raced on this track before, but he's a very fine young driver. When I say young, I mean young, just 17 years of age. And incredibly, this is his, he's been racing Porsches for three or four seasons. Annoyingly young, yes, for the success he's been able to put together, but boy, does he have it right. And you know what, uh, the guy that he's uh, just leading in the points by those scant nine, Benitez, also four wins, but the story is, Madison has a couple more podiums, and that is what has opened that margin up for him. And keep in mind, we have, including this race, six to go in the championship, nine points when you get 20 for a win is nothing. This is a very close points battle. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you, know, you need to be scoring consistent points in this championship. Both of those two guys, both Madison Snow and Dan Benitez Jr., they both had two poor finishes in the championship. Yet, it's still out ahead of everybody else because everybody has had some poor finishes, which is kind of unusual in this series. Oh, well, there's a problem for that. Is that Benitez? That is Benitez. 25 is the number, and he is at a crawl. Something has, oh, this is horrible for that championship. It certainly is. That's, uh, he's clearly got a major problem. Something dangling below the car there on the right hand side. Maybe he's had an accident go. Well, we have talked about just how incredibly bumpy. Really, he, he knows it's terminal yes, too, doesn't he? Does, he does, and he's actually pulling it. That's uh, the, after the uh, the pit lane there, so he's pulling directly into the paddock area where the cars are parked, uh, and he knows his race is over, and potentially too disastrous for his championship aspirations also. What a great shot, up close, zoomed in as these cars work that very tricky and rough chicane. Watching them funnel through. There's Madison Snow. And folks, you see all of that to black. That's tire rubber down, but it's in a heavy braking zone. And it's not just gets black and stays dark all the way to the apex. It's dark, then light, then dark, then light. That tells you this is a bumpy surface. The cars are compressing and releasing over those bumps. And the uh, the rubber that's being deposited down is heavy and then light and heavy light. Just a real clear indication that that entrance to turn one is incredibly rough and bumpy and uh, you've got to really be good on your braking because you've got to modulate that pedal all the way through there to not lock up and skate wide. Yeah that's right it's, uh, it, it, it's a fine balancing act on this racetrack I mean parts of the track are fairly smooth this area here is actually pretty smooth into this tight chicane here now we go across literally across the rail, railroad tracks there it's amazing what they do to, to prepare this racetrack there's generally a, a, tr a light rail 
and try and the goat runs right it through the track there and across on Pratt Street as well. And then this that particular area they're able to completely pave over. It's about a foot of asphalt they lay down. They did that on Thursday afternoon. Now rip, rip rip it up again after the racing is completed on Sunday. Uh, and uh, it's just an amazing job they're able to do yeah. that. And that asphalt there, uh, it doesn't get ripped up by the race cars. It stays down and does the job perfectly. So a remarkable piece of engineering. Yeah, they've, they've come up with a nice formula, that's for sure. And here, and here in, the, in the foreground here, the exit of the chicane, you can see as Madison comes, the snow comes through, you can see how his car bump, leaps over those uh, railroad tracks there. Whoa, oh. and over the curves. Well, that was Greg Kjersen with that final curve a little bit too hard. It's very tricky bouncing at, particularly through that corner. And then when you get on the rail tracks as well, that tends to throw the car sideways. So it really is, uh, you know, it, it's a car control clinic that these guys are putting out on out there at the moment, particularly Madison Stones now beginning to produce a bit of a gap between himself and Brett Sandberg in second place. Well, that's exactly why that chicane is there, is you cannot do the same paving job you talked about over in that pit lane area uh, because Pratt Street is such a major thoroughfare, so they had to put the chicane in. Otherwise, cars, uh, especially some of the other cars running here on this weekend at the Grand Prix of Baltimore, catching significant air because of the speeds they were carrying and the lack of, uh, of travel. So uh, pretty intricate the way that they've had to unfold this, and you are right. Madison Snow really starting to uh, clock some laps right now. Last time a 137.5 compared to Sandberg's 38.1. So uh, around a half a second in these last couple of laps, he's been able to open up. There's a look at uh, Mike Levitas. And you can see running the Porsche of Towson on that car. He's got another guy that's racing as a teammate here with that same sponsorship, Ben Keating, running in this. Ben, of course, is also running in the American Le Mans Series GT Challenge category here this weekend so he's looking for any extra seat time he can get uh, but Mike Levitas doing a nice job. Indeed and Ben Keating he's looking to get some more experience because yeah. he'll be running also in the uh, GTC class of the American Le Mans Series presented by Tequila Patron a little later this afternoon but here is Michael Levitas there is one of the uh, NGT cars going slowly but now this is Sloan Uri car number 20 coming up now behind our gold class leader and Michael Levitas he's a local guy he's right here in Baltimore uh, and uh, David Williams, his teammate, he's from locally as well, from Annapolis in Maryland. So, ooh, or is it the wall again? I, he just got a little offline, and I think he may have picked up some uh, flag. Now he's got a, I think he broke the suspension on that left front corner. That's the 29 of Eduardo Cisneros uh, having some struggles as well. Just limping, it looks like he may have some damage to the right rear corner of that car. Wow, there's a look at Keating. This is coming through, but suddenly lots going wrong, and I just think, Offline, you've got all of the spent tire rubber. You've also got leaves from the overhanging trees, and the grip goes away, and suddenly you've got nothing to hold you where you need to be. And here's a change. We've got yeah. Michael Mills here who's managed to find a way past uh, Craig Dewis, and another battle for fourth and fifth places. Now coming up to, towards the pit lane complex, this little chicane before the pits. Michael Mills gets on the brakes a little bit too late. The car steps sideways, but he does keep it under control. But he has got himself ahead now of Craig Dewis. Great comeback drive by Mills. Not that uh, he was ever that far back, but you know, you get behind a guy named Lewis and you get your way back around, uh, you're finding things. And yep. it is possible that some of these cars now, they may have had just a slightly different setup on the cars. And as this is, race is getting longer in, the tires, you know, as good as these Yokohamas yep. are, and they're amazing, uh, they get overheated. You can abuse them and the like. And the deeper you run, maybe the balance is coming good for some of these guys, and they're going to get stronger in this latter half of the race, essentially. That's true, yeah. It's a long race. It's 45 minutes. It's not, not a little sprint race. So that's a, a good run here by uh, Michael Mills to get himself back into contention. But now uh, Craig, oh, oh Mills, uh, straight lines to GK. And he's got to make sure that he doesn't, he's shown here not to have gained any advantage. Uh, because uh, by shortcutting the course there, that certainly gives you a big advantage over the guy who might be trying to uh, get a toe to make a pass. But now Craig Jurson in that car number 27, in his mirrors is Casey Corman. Those are the two leading contenders in the Masters class. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. The officials are going to be talking to that team, but Mill saying, let him go by. Uh, because uh, under pressure like that, you have essentially cut the course. And I think it would be interesting to see how that plays out at this point uh, as we watch Mills uh, has not yet done anything to allow that to get going. It sure has tightened up, as you pointed out, the battle in the Masters class. Dewerson now fifth with uh, Kuhlman right behind him in that number 15 entry uh, in the sixth spot. And, you know, and that's going to certainly motivate, I would think, Kuhlman. Now that he's got, he can see Dewerson, he's right there in front of him, knowing that this is a potential win in that category. 
there's no reason that he's not going to spoil it up a little bit more. No, there isn't. Uh, Casey Kuhlman, he's been a uh, very consistent performer this year. He's done a, a super, super job. He's uh, won the Masters class in uh, four races, and all by the first two races of the season, he's been on the podium, first, second, or third in the Masters class. And that's what has enabled him to pull out a 10-point advantage over Craig Jewison. Jewison's won more races. He's won six times coming into this weekend, but he's had a few uh, poorer finishes as well. So that is what has enabled Kuhlman to open out a little bit of an advantage. So Kuhlman, for, for Kuhlman's, for Kuhlman's perspective, he'll be pretty happy here to follow Craig Jewison. You only lose out two points here uh, and with uh, five more races after yeah. this afternoon. He's still in good shape for the championship, but uh, for Craig, you know, he, uh, he always wants to, uh, he wants to win. And one thing that I just love about the way they've got the cameras set up around this track, they've got bikes on those cameras. And you can hear those tires chirping and working. Now, watch this as Yuri here, and he's just a little bit wide, and you can see he's off of that groove. I think he just ran out of grip. Yeah, I, I think you're right here. And you know, rubber gets laid down on the racetrack as the cars sort of turn into the corner here. And offline, off the racing line, it's uh, it has a lot less grip. And also, there's little bits of marbles of rubber get sort of rolled up off these tires and they get they distributed off the line too. So that makes it even more slippery out there. And I think Slonori he got the run uh, on uh, on, Le on Levitas going up, but that's short yep. straight away toward Pat Pratt Street. But run a little bit wide and then as you say no grip and the car just slid into the wall and unfortunately is the end of Sloan's race so he started from the pole position with uh, tremendous opportunities in this race it's all gone sour he's going to have to wait at least one more day but uh, for that first victory got off of the clay as they say they you every say. time yes indeed uh yeah he had, I mean, he had some great opening laps as well but right now madison snow Hanging on to the lead, uh, but the margin now uh, has uh, come down a little bit. Madison's last lap, a 38.5, 1 minute 38.5. Sandberg at a 38 flat, and has brought that back now to under three seconds. So looking very good. As a matter of fact, David Ostella sitting in that third spot, actually running a little bit quicker than Madison as well. So uh, that uh, margin is uh, is a uh, you know, pretty good one. It's the second between Sandberg and Ostella. Yeah, and as you can see, the margins here coming down into turn one. There is Madison Snowy negotiates turn one and turn two now down toward the hairpin and uh, there's about a three second gap back to Brett Sandberg and as you see now there's a good uh, eight or ten car lengths between those two true speed auto sport cars of Sandberg and Ostella in second and third. Yep, Snow, Sandberg, Ostella, Mills and then Dewerson running fifth leading in the Masters. And Madison Snow continuing to lead here looking very impressive a three second lead over Brett Sandberg, who's got about a second in hand over teammate David Ostella. Michael Mills running in fourth. That's the number 41 effort racing car. And Craig Dewerson continuing to run a very competitive fifth, leading in Masters. However, Casey Coleman right behind him in that battle for Masters and on track. Six overall. Ben Keating is seventh. Uh, Madsen runs in eighth. Mike Levitas leads ninth in ninth and is the leader in the gold category. And Williams sits tenth overall, second in the gold class. And this uh, is a pretty fascinating battle as well. That's the 41 of Mills with Dewerson right behind him and Coleman right there in that cool sport, right motorsports car. Those uh, second two cars in your frame behind that blue effort racing entry, that's for the lead in Masters in the Platinum Cup. It is. It's also for the lead in the team's championship yes. as well between uh, effort racing, the car in front here, the car 41, and the uh, silver and orange car behind it of MGT Motorsport. This is a battle of the race for sure. It is for fourth, fifth, and sixth places. And Michael Ooh, Mills has a good defensive oh. line going into the corner, and that compromises his exit. That's going to give Jurson a, a chance to uh, really put the pressure on Mills, but uh, there's it's not enough of a, of a gap of a, of a straightaway there to get a, a move made before that chicane. So then Jurson has to tuck in behind it. Now, Coolman is right with these two. I was going to say, if it wasn't for that chicane, Kane, Mills was had. Yes. Dewerson was going to get him, but he couldn't get it done. Oh boy, problems continue. The number 24 now. This is Marciano again, and uh, he's uh, got over into those tires, but is going to be able to get going and continue. There's a good look at that graphic on the side of the car. He's a former Marine, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, he's having a rough race here today. As you can see, some damage to that right corner. Let's see if we can see what happened here, Jeremy. 
Coming in here, ooh, he's just wide, and yeah. that's going to do it. Just carried a bit too much speed there under braking and uh, turned it around, and uh, he made some contact with there with the, uh, the, with the th thankfully with the sort of tire barriers before that concrete wall. But it's a shame for Mark, but you know, he's on a steep learning curve this yes. season, and great attitude, and it's just wonderful to see what he's doing for his fellow former veterans. And this afternoon, he's literally going to be give, giving away a house. Yeah, it's amazing. With his Circuit Racing team uh, in an organization that's phenomenal called Operation Homefront with some help from Wells Fargo. There's an Army specialist here who was injured in Iraq during his tour of duty, now sca uh, stationed at Fort Meade. Joseph Saunders is here with his wife, Tara. And during the pre-race for the American Le Mans Series race, they are going to hand him a mortgage-free house, the keys to a home, uh, to say thank you for his service to this country. So absolutely fantastic uh, what uh, Marchiano Circuit Racing is doing with that group from uh, Operation Homefront. It's pretty special. Uh, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. And they're going to be doing the same, I believe, in the next couple of races, races as yeah. the races that we go to as well at the end of this season. Just fantastic what that group is doing. Yep. He's looking after his own. That's pretty special indeed. Uh, a little bit of a problem racing-wise for him, though, obviously, as he's struggling a bit in the pack. Yeah, Taking a look here, there. He's had problems all weekend. Yeah, he had a problem uh, with the, the engine, actually, in the very first session. Day, so he missed the second practice session. So he's certainly behind on his track time. But uh, there's a steep learning curve. He's got the right attitude and the right approach for it as well. But in the meantime, here is this battle still going on for second and third. Brett Sandberg holding off David Ostella. Uh, they're both youngsters. Brett Sandberg, uh, is uh, he's only 20, uh, 24 years old, 23 years old, from uh, Allendale, New Jersey. And right behind him uh, from Toronto, Canada is David Ostella. He's just 21 years of age as well. He's making a move from open wheel racing to closed wheel and concentrating, as you were saying earlier, on the... Uh, GT3 Series up in Canada this year, but opportunity came up to join the Truce and Autosport team for this round in Baltimore, and David Ostell said, yes, thank you very much, I'll have some of that, and uh, he's doing a fine job at the wheel of that car. Boy, isn't he, and uh, you said he's got a, a, one of the few people with a little bit of track experience here, and that is going to be huge. I mean, the, the chicane has been altered a little bit, otherwise the layout of the track, uh, very, very similar to what it has been in previous years, so that track knowledge is going to help. Here's that battle again in Masters in the Platinum class, continuing to be pretty strong. Craig Dewerson, that number 27 entry from NGT Motorsports, uh, just having himself a great, great weekend here in that um, Tampa Bay Endotonics car. That's the second part of the frame coming right there. And then right behind him is Casey Coleman in the Cool Sport Wright Motorsports entry, that number 15. That's your battle for Masters. And uh, boy, that time, though, Durison getting through that chicane much, much better. Coleman actually lost a fair chunk of ground. So being a dentist when you're racing on a racetrack like this is probably not a bad idea because this will test the fillings for sure. It's really rough out there. But uh, Craig, uh, he's, he's got his head down now. He's He's uh, pulled out a bit of a margin again over Casey Coleman. And the same could be said for Michael Mills. He got a bit ragged for a couple yep. of laps there. That was what enabled, well, after he got past with Craig Jewison. But now Michael Mills, he's got his focus back together again, I think. Now he's pulled out a little bit of a, a margin over that number 27 Momo car of Craig Jewison. And now Michael Mills, again, he's just got to concentrate on what's happening ahead of him, not what's going on behind him. Into our final 10 minutes, and that is indeed the great advice is, uh, you know, look forward uh, the old saying, fold the mirrors down. Yeah. Just get into it and drive and not don't worry about what's coming. There's a very up close and personal look at that chicane. You see all of the marks on those tires at the exit of the, of the chicane. Uh, we talk about tires on race cars getting abused, tires on, sitting on race tracks getting a lot of abuse as well. More problems here uh, for Yano. And I wonder that, you know, he had that was a big off that he had, and he had all that damage to the car, and I think it probably has just knocked that car completely out of whack. Yeah, but he's, uh, there's no major damage on the car. He's got some you know, bumps and bruises, that's for sure. Yep. And, uh, but, uh, you know, he's, he's learning all the time, is Mark. And uh, yes, he's, yeah. he's still running 11th place, actually, yeah. because a couple of other, several other cars have had some, some uh, difficulties in this race. We've had Colin Thompson was out on the very first lap. Uh, Angel Benito Senior, who's out. Stone Uri, we've seen, already seen out of the race. Uh, and uh, a couple of other people have difficulties as well. So uh, Yano is still up into 12th place. And if you can just make sure he brings the car home there, that would actually uh, be his best finish in the, in the championship this year. Well, he certainly is deserving, as you said. Uh, very new to the sport, doing a nice job with Steve Learning here. And last shot through the chicane, Dewerson, that is what you call a close margin. 
as he came through. I think that uh, those tires may have moved, but I don't know if he even touched them. I think it may have been just so close to wind off of that car just uh, got those tires. That was as close and as perfect a run through the chicane as we have seen. And that's why Dewerson, once again, was able to close right back up on the back of this beautiful blue number 41 effort racing entry of Mike Mills, currently running fourth overall. But it is the battle behind him that is compelling between Dewerson and Kuhlman in those two cars. That orange and silver NGT Motorsport entry, and right behind him, that white and red and blue Cool Sport entry from Wright Motorsports. And Mills now, they are coming up on some traffic. This can make things interesting, Jeremy. Yes, indeed. I think that's Danny Gianfrancesco, who's running third in the gold category. He's a, a lap nice down job. to the leaders, yet, yeah, and he uh, does a very fine job of staying right out of the way. That's a white car uh, as, as they uh, negotiate in case Kuhlman gets through as well. So hats off there to uh, Gian Gianfrancesco. Way. He's kind of running his own race there. Yeah. He's not really got anybody to race with at the moment. So from his perspective, just bring it home and get some championship points in the gold category. One more time through the chicane. Mills leads them in. Okay, really Watch Dewars. Boy, he gets, Dewarson is so clean and close to those yeah. tires. The way he just cuts that margin down really gets a good run out of the chicane. But Mills was able to get the power down extraordinarily well that time. Stretches that up just a little bit. Yeah, Michael Mills is pretty untidy through those. Yeah. Really, he, he hammered those curbs. And you, you do that uh, too many times. S suspension isn't going to like that too much. But he's certainly hanging on here. And Michael Mills is hanging on in fourth place. And that margin between himself and Craig just. Oh, gap, Mills, oh, too high. Another hot. mistake. Yeah. Got it gathered up. But yeah, the question it's a is workout. Now, it's yeah. a workout. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's a very physical racetrack. It's very hot and humid today as well. Because he's from uh, from South Texas. He's from the uh, just south of Houston, Michael Mills. So he's, he's used to this sort of weather. But I wonder where it's getting to him a little bit here because that's two mistakes there in kind of four corners. Well, he may be used to the weather, but this track, you know, that all the way from the chicane down until you get back through that fifth straight is violently rough in spots. Yeah, you know, we were, you know. You know, we've talked about it. At the end of a race, you probably feel like you've got 15 rounds of kidney punches from a heavyweight. Uh, it's it's tough, and you're right. He just may be starting to feel it physically right now. Yeah. It's, uh, you've, uh, the powers of concentration that are required to drive a race car on the limit for 45 minutes oh. are not to be underestimated, let me tell you. Did you see that? Coleman, midway through that corner, the back end stepped out, and that's that one where that wall comes back. Somehow he was able to one make the save, two get rid of enough speed that it didn't carry him right into that wall. That was a great save after he had that moment. Here's that study, the bounce. Look at how smooth Dewerson is through there. Then the bounce again by Mills. Dewerson really has a fabulous line to that chicane. That's quick and also non-abusive to that car. And consistent too. Yeah, he's yeah. hitting his marks every time. Michael Mills in front of him. He's certainly more ragged. And is able to just once again to close in now as they come around. That tight corner at turn one through the kick in turn two. Going down now towards the hip into turn three. This is where Michael Mills left his braking just a little bit too late last time around. Ooh, this time he gets it done, a and you bit can more see Dewerson was actually waiting to try the uh, the over under. He was setting up for it, and that time Mills just parked that thing right to the apex. Nice job yep. by Mills. Five minutes. We are now five minutes remaining in this 11th round again of the IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama with uh, that great support from Hertz as well. And uh, there was your overall leader. Here's the great battle for the rest of the podium overall between the two teammates in the uh, true speed entries, number 46, Brett Sandberg, and the number 44 of David Ostella. Both of them, young guns, doing a superb job. And hats off, really, to Madison Snow. He's just doing exactly what he needs to do here. He's got a, he's got a, a pretty commanding lead. He doesn't need to win it by half, you know, by a half a lap. He just needs to win it by a couple of seconds, and he's managed to control the gap between himself and those two true speed entries in around about three seconds. He's got to slow down here to uh, follow uh, the lapped car uh, of uh, Angel Benito Senior through the chicane. So Benito did get going again after that spin earlier on. Um, so you know, good composure here from Madison Snow. You know, he's a youngster, just 17 years old. As we see here, uh, the, uh, the a move being made by essentially by David Ostella. He's battled with the teammates in second and third. That is hard at it now. Oh, Ostella was moving way to the inside. And the run down into one. Sandberg had to stay way to the inside to defend. Has to do it again. Ostella clearly a little bit quicker right now. Can he do the over-under? Get that car rotated. Get the power down. Come up. No, it was the lap car is going to help Sandberg out. Watch for Estella. Can he try the move? Awfully narrow, turning into turn, uh, turn four. Oh, but Sandberg, the back end stepping out. 
that is going to cost a little bit of speed. Estella thinking about it, but again, a very tricky complex of corners coming up in Sandberg right down the middle of the track. Yes, I may be very defensive here. There's uh, Cisneros, uh, that's a lot of Cisneros who's made another mistake there at that turn five chicane, but uh, he's able to get that car out of the way. But this battle for second and third place is really heating up now, and Sandberg getting defensive uh, in his uh, attempts to keep the David Estella car behind him. He's got his work cut out. Sandberg is fifth in the points right now. Estella not really in this points run at all, concentrating on the Canadian GT3 championship. Uh, but I don't think he's got any qualms at all. He wants to show what he's capable of here. He will race Sandberg furiously. And as you can see, Sandberg has already had to go defensive a couple of times. That, that little bit of brake lock up again. Now onto the front straight. And let's see, Estella was able to get through that chicane that last lap, Jeremy, very, very well. And uh, get the power down a little bit sooner. Both of them just bounding over that as we are now two and a half minutes to go. And Estella once again down to the inside. Yeah, once again, it is Sandberg who adopts the uh, defensive position. Oh, there. big lockup. Oh, Jeremy, he just stayed locked, but so does Estella. He floats wide. Sandberg cuts back down underneath. Both of them way beyond the threshold in the break zone, locking up. And in the end, Sandberg comes out in front and actually gains a little bit. Great stuff. Oh. Great stuff. It was a stellar there. I thought, great, this is my chance. This is my chance. He dives down to the inside. But what he didn't realize, he was so tight on the inside that you have to slow the car down even more because you do not have the same arc through the corner when you turn it from the outside. He suddenly realizes, uh-oh, I'm going too fast here. But he just about managed to get it wound up and get around the corner. But in the meantime, Sandberg said, phew, I got away with that one. And he tucks down to the inside and, and uh, comes out again in the lead. So it's a change of position there very briefly in turn two, turn one. But it is now again still Sandberg in second place. Ostella has it all to do again. And you can tell these two guys are racing hard, not just from that lockup, but now virtually every tight corner of the cars are sliding to the walls. Yeah. They are flogging these cars. They are flogging these amazing Yokohama tires. And we are within an, a minute and a half. So this lap, maybe one more. Sandberg way wide. He had to breathe it to get out of it. Let's see if Ostella can get some kind of a run. The problem is you got this right, then this left. Both of these cars, you can see the back end swinging around. Heavy load. Sandberg locks up again. Ostella opens it up. Not enough of a run really to try anything down into the chicane. So for Ostella, get through the chicane smooth. Get the power down early. Ooh, Sandberg, a big bounce. That may be it. White flag is out, and Estella's there. <laughs> Great stuff. Once again, uh, Sandberg locking up that left front brake under braking for turn 12. And now it's Estella along the out on the outside line into turn one. Can he make it stick? He's going to try and stay right around the outside. He's got the inside for this little kink. But Sandberg going to try it as well, almost into the wall. Sandberg going to think about it, down to the inside. It's a braking duel. And it is won by Estella Sandberg trying, ooh, gives him a little tap. Actually, that just helped. Sandberg goes around. That's it. A little bit too greedy on the throttle, trying to come out, giving it everything he could. What a great race that was between those two, though. It's a funny oh. mistake there by Brett Sandberg. But what a wonderful pass by David Estella. And I think Sandberg, they, as they went around side by side in turn one, you know, Sandberg could have kind of forced the issue there, maybe had contact between the two, but hey, they are teammates after all. Even though Sandberg is, you know, he's going for uh, points in the championship, as you said, fifth place in the championship coming into this, into this weekend. So, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want to be too hard on each other, but finally then Sandberg just got on the throttle a little bit too soon coming out of that turn three hairpin around that car goes. So that's going to cost him several positions. Absolutely. For this young man, just a couple of corners to negotiate. And he will bring it home for his fifth win of the season. If he can put it together, one last turn onto the front straight. The chicane awaits, get through there clean. And Madison Snow not only will get that fifth win of the season, Jeremy, but with Benitez sitting back as a DNF, he will expand that points lead significantly. There it flies. The checker is out. Madison Snow and his phenomenal season continues. And look at this. Here we go. This is the battle. This is Mills coming up. And you can see Dewerson able to now open that margin up rather significantly. As a matter of fact, I don't see Coleman at this point. So we'll have to see just what unfolds there. Mills bringing that car across the line. And it looks like uh, Casey Coleman. Oh, there he is. Uh, he ended up, I think, caught out when Sandberg spun. I think it just caught Coleman out when uh, Sandberg was uh, regathering things a little bit, and it dropped him off. But there is a guy having a remarkable year, and uh, he's got a great future ahead of him in the near future, too. I believe uh, he's going to be going as part of that Porsche Young Driver Academy.
great stuff from Madison Snow. Yeah, he was invited to be part of the Team USA scholarship program as well. He's really turned a lot of heads this year as Madison Snow. Very mature young man. And that was a great, very mature drive this afternoon. He just measured his performance and uh, turned, just turned the laps fast enough to win the race. Great job by Madison Snow. Enjoying his lap of honor is this young man. And Madison Snow, hand out the window. It's not just waving to the crowd, folks. That's trying to get air into that cockpit. It is very, very warm and humid here. And you know he has worked incredibly hard to earn this fifth win of the season. Madison Snow, Estella with that marvelous battle with Brett Sandberg right at the end, managing to make the pass, coming home in second. Mike Mills benefiting as well by Sandberg spin and completing the overall and platinum class podium. Fourth overall, Craig Dewerson, another great drive, winning the Masters category once again. Uh, and in the fifth spot coming through was Brett Sandberg recovering. Casey Coleman, second in the Masters class, sits in that sixth spot. Uh, then Ben Keating, then Matson will be third in the Masters class, eighth overall. And uh, then we've got our ninth and tenth spot. Mike Levitas uh, winning in the Gold Cup with Williams, tenth and second in the Gold Cup. Both of them Masters category drivers as well. But what an entertaining race on so many levels. And for Madison Snow, uh, just another fabulous performance. And a huge points day for him. And come, not, not only does he come away, there's his father, Martin, there, uh, looking at the re left front tyre. He's a f very accomplished former racer himself. And what a great day this was, though, because he did everything right at the front of the field, won the motor race, and then his closest championship contenders, Angel Benitez Jr. and Sloan Uri, both had problems. Yep. So this is going to give a commanding championship lead now to Madison Snow with just five rounds remaining this year. Round 12 of the Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by York Nahama, and it's the second race on the streets of Baltimore. And as the green flag drops, it's drama straight away, as Eduardo Cisnero spins, causing an accident, six cars involved, and once again the Porsche Panamera safety car is out on the streets. There's big names involved as gold-class championship leader Michael Levitas is mixed up in the incident causing his retirement. And also David Estella and Craig Dewson mixed up in it too. It was better news for Madison Snow though. Starting 10th out of 16 after his qualifying shunt, he'd made up some good positions and by the end of lap one was ahead of his championship competitor Angel Benitez Jr. On the restart, Brett Sandberg set himself up for a dive down the inside to turn one. At the front, the young guns were having their own shootout. Benitez fought his way back in front of Madison Snow, with Colin Thompson in the mix between the three of them. Madison Snow finally makes his move on Thompson, while Brett Sandberg and Benitez are battling it out into turn one. In some close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing into the braking area, Angel Benitez broke part of his front suspension, retiring him from the race, Brett Sandberg was able to retain his position. So it's a top step of the podium for Sloan Uri after a perfect race from pole position. Madison Snow in the number 62 takes second place with Brett Sandberg having another great run and turning it into a third place on the podium. You now I kept getting a, a radio communication telling me my gaps. It started out was 8 seconds, 10 seconds, 12 seconds and then by the end of the race it was 18 seconds. So. You know, I, I didn't care how far back they were, I just knew I was going to drive 100% every single lap and finish whatever I finish and hold on to the first place. In the gold category, David Williams of TPC Racing is followed home by Danny Gianfrancesco and Casey Kuhlman once again has a victory in the Masters. Terrible race for Michael Levitas, the Maryland native with a lot of supporters on the grounds, failing to see the chequered flag. So as we leave the streets of Baltimore after rounds 11 and 12 of the Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama, here are the point standings. Madison Snow extends his championship lead and now stands on 188 points. Sloan Uri moves to second in the championship after a poor weekend for Angel Benitez Jr, who's dropped down to third. In Masters, Casey Kuhlman now leads after Craig Durson's last round DNF and Michael Levitas, despite his wars, still leads in gold. That's it from Baltimore. Join us next time from Austin, Texas at the Circuit of the Americas 
for rounds 13 and 14 of the Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama.